I want to show you how you can use the data table function in Excel to create the present value and future value annuity factors um, that you would compute here. Now, these probably aren't all that useful, but it's a good exercise in understanding what the data table does and um, in sort of seeing, you know, actually maybe visualizing the different factors here. Now, the formula for the present value of an annuity, where C is the annuity, is C times this value that's in the brackets. Now, you can use this formula, and in the old days, before financial calculators and before spreadsheets, that's what we used, or we used tables in the back of the book. And if you look in the back of uh, most financial management textbooks, they still have these tables, even though people don't use them too much. But if you go back three or four decades before the financial calculator, you'll, you'd find that these were in fact what you used to calculate the present value of an annuity or just present and future value. So these were quite common in the textbooks. And again, they still exist, although I don't suspect they're used very often. So what I have here is you'll notice that this factor doesn't depend on C. It's the same no matter what. So if I make C equal to 1, I'll just get this factor here. So down here, I'm going to recreate this. I'm going to solve for one value for 1% and 5 periods. And here you can see that I've actually created the table already. So that would be what would go right here you know, 1% and 5 periods. But we're going to fill in the table using that data table function, and it's going to be really easy to do. I actually did a video where I showed how to create a present and future value table. And, you know, I just copied the formula. But this is way easier when you use the data table function. And then once you get a feel for this, you'll be able to find applications for other things you might want to do. So let's solve for the present value factor. It equals PV. It asks you for the rate. So I'm going to put in 1%. I'm going to put in the number of periods here at 5. And the payment is minus 1. And you have a couple other factors you can put in. You can put in the future value. Okay, We don't have a future value. And you can put in the type. So the type if you leave it blank, it's going to compute the factor for an ordinary annuity. That is, cash flows begin at the end of the period or one year in the future. If you put a 1 in, it's going to compute the factor for an annuity due, which means the first cash flow begins today. All right, we're just going to leave it blank. We'll calculate the ordinary annuity. And we get, whoops, I made a mistake there. I typed a period instead of a comma. So let me just fix that. And there we get it. And it's actually not a dollar amount in this case. Um, we really want it just to be a factor. So let me just reformat that. So I'd like to fill in this table. Now I could put this formula in here and tell it that, you know, it's in this cell. And, you know, when we copy down and around, it'll recalculate this. But it's much easier to use the data table function. So first I put the value, or the thing we calculated, right here. And then I'm going to now calculate, or I'm going to now highlight this entire um, table. So I'm going to go out to 10% and 15 periods, but of course you could do much more if you wanted to. So I'm going to go to data what if analysis if you don't have it you can install it by going to file options add-ins excel add-ins go and i believe you have to have i believe it's the analysis tool pack but it might also be the solver add-in as well so click them both they come in kind of handy so i have this highlighted and so i have i've gone to my data tab i'm going to click what if data table it's going to ask me for the row input. The row input is the percentage, so I'm going to highlight this. And then it's going to ask me for the column input. And these are the, this is the time period, so I'm going to hit this. And now I'm going to hit OK. 
and it's filled the entire table for me which is quite nice so let me just let me format it so they all have the same number of decimal places we don't, probably don't need quite that many decimal places so let's see here maybe we'll cut it back to I'll go back one more all right so you can see that at 1% for five periods this is what we had over here we actually weren't showing as many decimal places so if I expand it you'll see it's the same number here but we get this factor for everything so if you wanted to know if you invested a hundred dollars a year at six percent interest for ten years you would go right here where that grid meets and you'd multiply the hundred dollars times the seven point six three uh, seven point three six oh one and you'd have what seven hundred and thirty six dollars and a penny so that would be the present value of that annuity if you happen to have oh let's say four percent for 15 periods it would be 11.1184 and you again you'd multiply the hundred times this value if you want to do the future value for an annuity again it's the same formula here it's this formula here right now we're just going to calculate the future value so I'm going to say equals FV and again the rate is in the same place the number of periods is here and again I'm putting in a negative value for the for the PMT again it's not really a dollar amount that we want we just want that factor let me expand the decimal places a little bit alright I'm gonna do exactly the same thing I did before so I'm gonna have here um, the different rates 1% 2% and I'm just gonna carry that out I went out to 10% so I'll go out to 10% again and then right here I'm going to have I'm going to have the number of periods 1 2 and again I went down to 15 so I'll do the same thing here And again, I want to put this value right here. And then again, I just highlight the whole table. And I only went to 14 periods, but that's okay. I'm going to go to data table, data, what if analysis, data table. And again, this row input is going to be the interest rate and the column input is going to be the number of periods I'm gonna click OK and again it's filled it in for us here and let's just reformat that let's see we'll go something like that and again looks pretty good right if we use the five percent uh, I'm sorry five years at one percent you see we get this value here and again this is going to tell you the future value factor or this value in here so again if you save let's say a thousand dollars a year for ten years at an interest rate of five percent you'd be right here and you would just multiply it by that factor of 12.5779 so you'd have um, twelve thousand five hundred and seventy seven dollars and ninety cents so the data table is a great way to change these values and to do this computation to create tables like this sometimes you may want to create a table that has these two dimensions and you want different values based on what these variables happen to be and the data table lets you do that quite easily